As you can tell from my beard, it's been quite a while. I've been working on the car non-stop every single day. Uh, I was in a bit of a timeline and I kind of overdid that. So I was pushing to get the car finished. I'm sorry for you guys if uh, I didn't get too much content, but uh, hopefully I got enough. Um, I was able to move the car uh, the other day to a new location. So I'm working on it here at the moment. Still getting the tune sorted, but uh, there will be videos coming out soon or already have come out, depending on when this video makes it out. Could be before, could be after. I don't really know. Anyway, that's enough about the car. Today we're gonna be talking about a very, very important piece to this puzzle. So you guys probably already know from the thumbnail, but we finally received our turbo. It's from a company called Max Beating Rods. I've uh, used them before and I've actually had quite a great success. Turbos I've bought from them have lasted years and never had a problem always running them to the max. Um, so without further ado, we'll do a little bit of an unboxing video and uh, let's get to it. Got a nice uh, customer service card. We got our gaskets, metal gaskets, which is quite nice. Not interesting. We want to know what's inside here. Oh, and there she is. There she is, boys. Well, it's only a little tiny baby turbo. But we only got a 1.2 liter engine, so... There it is. Let's talk a little bit about the specs. So this is a turbine out of a Land Rover Freelander, uh, the 1997 to 2001 model. It's a Garrett GT uh, 1549. Uh, supposed to replace the Garrett. GT 1549 all right now I'm gonna put you guys on the computer and we'll have a look at the compressor map so that we can uh, have a, a better idea of how this turbo is gonna act on our car all right guys so we want to figure out how this turbo is gonna act on our car this is a compressor map right in front of you as you can see 
It's all full of crazy squiggly lines and numbers and percentages. Uh, we're going to figure out what all of that means just in a second. <clears throat> we're going to take it in steps. So the first thing we want to figure out is what these numbers on these axes mean. So we see on the y-axis, on this vertical axis here, we see pressure ratio. 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so on. And on the x-axis, we see corrected airflow in pounds per minute. What this graph is showing us is the efficiency range of the turbine. So that means that if the engine is pumping out 10 pounds per minute of air, and you're asking it to create a pressure difference of 1.5 times the um, absolute pressure so that means 7 to 7.5 psi over the 14.5 psi that normally um, are around at uh, sea level so that means that if you're asking it 7.5 psi of pressure at, and your engine is producing 10 pounds of air per minute, your, your point on the graphs will be exactly that, that middle there in lines intersect. So that means that we are going to be working at an efficiency of around 70 to 72 percent. As you can see these lines represent that percentage so that this line is going to be 72 percent everything inside of that line this line is going to be 70 percent everything inside of this circle or ellipsis elliptical shape thing is 70 percent then 68 then 65 and so on these numbers here wait maybe I can make it a little bit easier on you these numbers here if I don't draw exactly over it represent the turbine wheel speed we as uh, DIY tuners don't really get the chance to measure that so we're gonna leave it for the moment but that's what it means and as I explained before this is just the pressure ratio so how much pressure you're asking the turbo to create reference to the pressure that's around at sea level okay so now we figured out what that what this actually means and we can figure out what how it's going to behave on, on our car um, so as you can see I selected a graph of a turbo that's pretty close to the turbine that I've chosen so that we get a good idea of of what uh, what's gonna happen so we can see here this number is pretty important this is a, this has an AR ratio of 0 0.48 the turbo that we um, that we got is a 0 0.35 So what does that mean? So AR, I've heard a lot of different people call it a lot of different things, but what it actually is, is area divided by radius. That's all it is. So if you think about a turbo, the area of the outlet, it's not actually the outlet, but let's call it the outlet. It's the area of the outlet of the turbine compressor divided by the radius that that outlet has from the center of the turbine wheel. That's all it is. And as this number goes up, it just becomes a freer flowing turbo. So that means that 
the power curve is going to be moved up it means it's going to be more efficient at higher airflow which is this at a higher airflow this turbine was are, is going to be more efficient so basically this whole uh, this whole map gets moved this way with a higher AR ratio let's just change the color there so that means that because we have a 0 0.35 AR ratio this map is actually further right than uh, than what our map is going to be like so we can think about it as our map being the same as this but moved this way so let's have a look um, how do we figure out how many pounds of uh, air our engine is producing at a given RPM so the best way and quickest way that I've found is by going to this website it's uh, the Bog Warner match bot and uh, this is a website where they help you uh, choose a turbo for your application which works perfectly in our case the only thing you basically need to add is your engine displacement whether you are at uh, sea level or not you want to put your engine speeds right here your volumetric efficiency if you know that you can calculate that for you're always going to be around 80 to 100 percent maybe you're going to be a little bit more um, efficient with when the turbo comes on but pretty much that's your efficiency reigns um, you need to play around with your boost pressure here it's a bit of you need to guesstimate a little bit um, I know that this turbo is gonna come on really strong really soon uh, but I still uh, kept my my numbers low so I only put 5 psi at 1500 rpm 11 psi at 2000 rpm 15 and then 17 and 17 uh, because yeah just wanted to keep it you know down and uh, I wanted a turbo that spools up really quick for the off-roading that I'm gonna be doing I don't want something that's gonna be really laggy so off-road I can't really use that so that's what you gotta work around figure out where you want your boost to be at what RPM and uh, then once you figure that out you can uh, adjust your turbine expansion ratio which is the AR you basically want to just do your absolute pressure divided by this pressure the pressure that you want going into the engine and you will get your turbine expansion ratio with that you have basically have everything that you need to figure out at a given RPM how many pounds of air your engine is going to you're going to produce and wait now this one here corrected airflow in pounds per minute you have it also in different um, different units but this is what we need because our uh, graph is in pounds per minute so there it is there we got 2.67 pounds at 1500 rpm 5 pounds at 2000 10 pounds at 3000 and on and on and on after you've done this you plug these number those numbers in a graph like that and considering that this um, this graph is basically going to be shifted all the way a little bit to the left because of the AR ratio we are pretty much going to be I expect bang on the middle in the medius part of our uh, torque curve so 
you can imagine this line here being around here and doing about the same thing like that so you can see how up until 5500 rpm we are using the best part of our turbine we're using the meat of that uh, efficiency range so that means that our air temperatures are going to be as low as they can be it means that uh, we're not over spinning the turbo it means that uh, we're uh, we're te we're making the best use as out of this turbo and because we don't need it to um, be extra powerful at the top end but we are looking for that low to mid range torque this I think is going to be excellent for um, for our purposes so that's how you read a turbo compressor map I hope you can choose your turbo now and thanks for watching I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting lately we've recently made it to 100 subscribers and I couldn't have made it without you guys. So thanks again for liking, subscribing to my uh, videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.